Hello. Our story begins on the Outer Rim planet of Meridun. Anakin and Ahsoka had recently saved Ayla Secure and Commander Bly from their crashing Venator. Though their Corvette was thrown into hyperspace and they were now stranded on what seemed to be an abandoned planet. Just before they escaped the crashing Jedi cruiser, Anakin threw everyone ahead of him as he risked his life to protect his friends. Now, he was in critical condition. He wasn't able to be cared for by a clone medic or have the necessary care to oversee his recovery. So he was taken into the Force, because without the proper care, he died. The Force welcomed him in, and Captain Rex, who was overseeing his care, had no clue that his pulse had gone cold. When Anakin's eyes opened up, he looked into nothingness. He saw what looked to be stars, and there was an eerie feeling of a void. He turned his head and looked over the edge into the nothingness below him. He was on some sort of catwalk, and he used his hands to push himself off the walkway. Anakin felt more alone than ever before, but he wasn't sure why he was here. He called out and heard his voice reverberate throughout the entire void. His head turned over to the other walkways around him. They were far apart from each other, but somehow all connected. Out of nowhere, he felt a familiar presence, but he wasn't sure what it was. Anakin looked around and then over his shoulder where he saw Qui-Gon Jinn looking at him. How was this possible? Anakin's body turned all the way around, and he asked if that was actually him and the Jedi Master nodded his head. He stepped forward and told Anakin that he had grown up. Anakin smiled and looked to Qui-Gon with joy, but a hint of sadness, one of which the Jedi Master noticed and asked why he was so disorganized. Anakin shrugged his shoulders and asked what he meant. Qui-Gon walked up to Anakin who now stood even in height with him. He placed his hand on Anakin's shoulder and asked that he walk with him. Anakin turned his head over and followed along with Qui-Gon, who told him that the galaxy had changed greatly since they last saw each other. Anakin agreed and said that he had to grow up really quickly after Qui-Gon departed. Master Jin knew this and he expressed his sincerest regrets for having died on Naboo. He asked how Obi-Wan had done with them and Anakin smiled, telling Qui-Gon that he had done well, but he still believed that Qui-Gon would have done a better job. Master Jin laughed a little and then told Anakin that the council once again had its fallacies. It was Obi-Wan's burden, but it should have been shared with them. Skywalker hadn't ever considered that. He just listened as Qui-Gon continued and asked Anakin if he knew where this place was. Anakin shook his head, and the Jedi Master told him that this was the world between worlds. The cosmic force was a powerful one, and because of the wondrous power at the disposal of the force, every single past, present, and future event was housed within this place. He told Anakin that everything from the exact moment Anakin entered the realm wouldn't be changed until he left it. The Force was always in motion, but there was a future that awaited Anakin. In his mind, he believed that he'd become Jedi Master Anakin Skywalker, Grand Master of the Jedi Order and leader of their cause. He imagined himself as the greatest warrior and the most efficient pilot the Order ever had. Anakin was smiling as the thought of Padme and him having a great relationship once the war was over and so on passed through his mind. Qui-Gon looked at Anakin with shame. He knew that none of that would come true. There was so much darkness that Anakin had yet come to grips with. Similar to his own master, Anakin would fall down the dark path and be dragged into the abyss of the Sith. However, it wasn't Qui-Gon's place to inform him of that information. Jin never dug into who Sidious was. All that mattered is that at the end of the journey, Anakin would conquer his demons and bring balance to the Force. His legacy would be upheld by a family of blood relation and of not blood relation. Qui-Gon believed this would be a fitting journey for Anakin. However, he wondered if Anakin was ready to accept the path ahead of him. He was on his deathbed and yet Anakin hadn't changed since he was a boy. Anakin stepped forward and asked again why he was brought here. The Jedi Master told him that he was dead. The Force brought him to Qui-Gon. Anakin stumbled back for a second. What did that mean? He was dead? Why would he be dead or how could he be dead? That didn't make any sense to him. Qui-Gon informed him that his noble sacrifice offered him a spot with the Force. However, there was a chance for him to return. None of this made any sense. He didn't understand how this was even conceivable. Qui-Gon looked down and told him that the Force was more wondrous than he cared to explore. There was a bit of shame that Qui-Gon felt. He would love to change Anakin's future, but that was beyond what he was capable of doing. He couldn't expose the future because he could not directly intervene. Anakin had to face everything on his own. He looked around and saw portals around him. He asked what those were, and Qui-Gon explained that they were moments in time. Each one housed a piece of galactic history. For Anakin, these moments would revolve around events that were close to him, ones that had and hadn't happened yet. 
Anakin turned and saw his pod race and walked over to the portal. He remembered that beautiful piece of work he made. Almost with sadness, he walked up and placed his hand at the edge of the portal and wondered why he left the planet. Being a slave was terrible, and leaving his mother was even worse. But he often asked what would have happened if he didn't become a Jedi. Would he be a famous pod racer or even a renowned bounty hunter? He watched as Qui-Gon picked him up after the race was won. He turned his head over and saw Qui-Gon smile from beside him. He placed his hand on Anakin's shoulder and told him that it was his first step into a larger world. Anakin nodded and they continued walking around. As they were doing this, Anakin saw a fight, one that he wasn't present for, and as it was going on, he realized what was going to happen. He could see a tired Qui-Gon Jinn struggle, and as he tried to defend from a strike, his lightsaber was thrown above his head and he lost his balance. Qui-Gon told Anakin to not intervene, but this was Anakin, and upon a gut reaction, he used the force and ripped backwards, pulling Qui-Gon through the portal and watched the ones sitting next to him vanish into thin air and become one with the individual who was from the portal. Anakin looked down with shock in his eyes, and he got down to Qui-Gon's side and asked if he was alright. Qui-Gon looked up and asked who he was, and Anakin then realized something. The person who was within this world between worlds was gone. He killed that person to save this other person, so he told Qui-Gon everything he understood, which sent a wave of shock through his body. He didn't understand how any of this was possible, but he was helped off the ground and caught his breath. Anakin then realized something else. He looked over his shoulder and started running. Qui-Gon was figuring out everything slowly. While he never heard of the world between worlds, he could infer that there was something about this place that could do otherworldly things. He then looked over and realized that Anakin was going to do this again. Qui-Gon understood that Anakin could completely change events of galactic history if he pulled someone that was instrumental to a galactic event, and he could change everything. Pulling him could have changed everything too. But it didn't, because Qui-Gon died and was pulled from that exact moment. But whatever Anakin was doing could do something far greater than that, so he ran forward chasing after him. But at his age, it was impossible to keep up. Anakin got to another portal and slid past it, tripping over his own feet before seeing something. He could see Tusken Raiders running away with his mother, and there was no sign of the Lars. Those force-forsaken liars. He knew they could not be trusted, especially not with his mother. Anakin raised his hands and felt the dark side rise from his bones. He lifted the Tusken Raiders off the ground and watched his mother drop. He used the force to pull her into the world between worlds as he channeled all of his inner darkness and lifted the entire warring pack. Qui-Gon called out Anakin's name but there was no response or reaction. The darkness was too powerful to reject. He simply twisted his hands and the sound of dozens of Tusken Raiders dying became audible before becoming silent. Anakin looked down and got to his mother's side. She was in good health. A little bruised, but he asked if she was alright. Like Qui-Gon, she was confused, and the questions were quickly answered. Qui-Gon would be able to explain everything to Shmi, and before they knew it, they were on Meridun again. Rex was obviously confused by the two people that randomly showed up out of nowhere, but at the very least, Qui-Gon could explain what he knew. He just had a million questions himself. One being, who was the guy wearing semi-Mandalorian armor? Rex could answer some questions, but for Qui-Gon and Shmi, Everything was simply confusing. They didn't know why they were here or why Anakin was suddenly injured but breathing again. But not even Anakin had the proper explanation for any of this. What followed was the entire mission on Meridun, where the Jedi would protect the Lerman and escape from the planet themselves. However, there were more pressing issues for the Jedi. Ahsoka wasn't familiar with Qui-Gon, but she didn't know of him. Now, he was here in the flesh, and there were many unknowns about the situation. When they returned to Coruscant, Anakin, Qui-Gon, and Shmi went to Padme's residence. Anakin was able to speak with both Qui-Gon and Shmi before they got back to Coruscant so he could explain the situation to them, which they were all pretty cool with. Anakin did have a chance to call Padme and tell her that something happened and how somehow his mother was back to the living. This didn't sound real, but if it was, Padme was very welcoming. Shmi could stay with her until they found her a new home to call her own. There was also some other questions and debates that awaited Shmi's return but they would have to wait until that moment came. Anakin was going to reveal the truth about the return of Qui-Gon Jinn to the Jedi. The two Jedi traveled from Padme's residence to the temple, where they would find themselves at the pinnacle of power. Anakin decided it'd be best to keep everything a secret until he revealed Qui-Gon's return, mostly because he liked the idea of showing up the council. When the two of them walked in, the expressions around the council moved from blank to confused. How was Qui-Gon standing before them? As he walked in, he noticed that there were some newer faces, and he looked to the corner of the room, 
believing to recognize one of them, but being unsure. Yoda was the first one to speak, which broke Qui-Gon's focus on the one Jedi in the side of the chambers. Yoda asked what happened and how any of this was possible. Anakin stepped forward and explained that he arrived on the planet of Meridun, and he died. He was transported to what an entity within the realm referred to as the World Between Worlds. Anakin continued expressing that this entity was the ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn, the one who had died on Naboo. Obviously, the council was confused by this notion. Qui-Gon never died, he just vanished. There was never a funeral because he simply never died, and because of that, there was another change to the timeline. Maul was killed on sight by Obi-Wan. The Jedi listened as Anakin continued forward and informed them that the timeline originally had Qui-Gon dying. He changed it when he removed Qui-Gon from the moment. He died, and now he was here, returned from the dead or simply returning from having vanished. The Jedi looked around to each other and then asked how he reached this realm. Anakin explained everything that he understood. The ghost of Qui-Gon had a lot of knowledge on the Force, but he was hiding things from Skywalker in the moment information that would probably upset the cosmic balance of everything. The current timeline from before Qui-Gon was saved would have had Anakin returning balance to the Force. Now, no one knew what would come from this one. Skywalker finished his sentiment, and the Council was still left confused. From behind them, Master Rancisus informed the Council that this was entirely possible. During his studies of the ancient Jedi, he learned that there were more mysteries of the Force that had been explored. Some of them were lost to history due to wars with the Sith, but there were still pieces of information that existed within the Jedi Archives. These tidbits of information could reveal knowledge to help access this world between worlds. Perhaps Anakin could light their way through it. The other council members were still unsure. However, there was a clear point made by the discovery of this new realm. It was proof that Anakin Skywalker was the chosen one, the individual meant to restore the balance, or as Qui-Gon had always understood, face his demons and conquer darkness. The Council, Anakin, and Qui-Gon went back and forth for a number of minutes, continuing the conversation and finally having their resolution. The Council would begin investigations and try and locate this portal, while Anakin would return to active duty. The Council still considered Qui-Gon a Jedi Master, so he was welcome to pick up his side of the war. However, there was something Yoda wanted to privately speak about with Qui-Gon. Being that he was out of the circulation of galactic events for so long, chances are he wouldn't ever know that Dooku joined the Sith. Yoda believed a delicate matter like this should be talked about in a one-on-one -on -one situation, especially since Yoda didn't want another member of his lineage falling to the darkness. Plus, there was an added bonus to this. Yoda knew Qui-Gon would likely be closer to Skywalker, and being that they would be so close, he could use Qui-Gon as a means to control Anakin. This in his mind would be the best way to bridge the gap between the Council and Anakin himself. The conversation wasn't easy. Dooku leaving the Order affected Yoda a lot and he knew that it would do the same to Qui-Gon. As the conversation weaved through the travesty of Dooku's fall, Qui-Gon understood what Yoda said. The situation was painful for both sides, but the revelation of being 11 years too late to save his master, Qui-Gon felt almost hopeless. Not to mention the fact that, aside from Dooku's departure into the ranks of the Sith, there was the darkness he saw from Anakin. While Anakin wasn't affected by this with his own memories, he was treated far worse because Qui-Gon never died. Obi-Wan never made the promise and after the council forced Anakin onto him, he was very neglectful of him. Ironically, the version of Anakin from the previous timeline was the calmer one, or the one that was currently here. Qui-Gon after speaking with Yoda would oversee Anakin's current status as a Jedi Knight. He didn't want to just pounce into a situation he wasn't familiar with, so he allowed Anakin to be himself. But aside from the flare-up he saw in the realm, there was no sign of Anakin being a hostile person. He seemed happy, even with the war going on. His training of Ahsoka was unorthodox, but she thrived off of it. He truthfully couldn't see anything wrong with Anakin's method of training, let alone his relationship with his soldiers. Qui-Gon knew Obi-Wan would have made a fine instructor, but Anakin turned out extremely well. However, he was still worried by what he saw in the War Between Worlds with the darker side of Anakin. Not for nothing, Skywalker was ecstatic as it was. His first father figure was around and his mother was safe again. He couldn't be happier about it. But that did leave one more conversation for Anakin to tackle. At the end of a day inside the temple with Qui-Gon shadowing him, Skywalker snuck across the city to be with Padme and Shmi. The two of them had spent a good part of the day hanging around with each other and chatting when Padme had time. Now came the difficult part. Shmi to an extent wanted to return to Tatooine and be with Cleeg Lars again, but Padme was trying to talk her out of it. When Padme and Anakin originally arrived on Tatooine, 
Pleeg showed no signs of struggle with the Tusken Raiders, and Anakin was never able to find his mother. Both of them agreed that at the time it felt like the Lars family bought a slave, gave her a home, and then killed her for fun. Anakin didn't outright kill the Lars family because Padme talked him out of it. Anakin had memories of the family that actually chased down the Tusken Raiders and lost members. However, he didn't want his mother going back to Tatooine, so he twisted the truth. Padme was very clearly willing to give Shmi a home here with her, considering the apartment had more than one bedroom. Anakin just piggybacked off everything his wife said, because there were things he clearly didn't remember because of this changed past. That was the moment Anakin realized. He didn't drastically change anything in the moment, but the effect had an otherworldly result. Things were different now because of his saving of Qui-Gon and Shmi. It didn't turn the galaxy upside down, but it did make Anakin question what else could come from this world between worlds. Sure, changing the past was bad, but what if he did something drastic? He knew he couldn't be a part of the plan to get into the world between worlds until they uncovered the secrets, but he was now curious. Regardless, he continued spending the night with Padme and his mother, which just sent him over the moon in happiness. He couldn't believe that his mother was alive again, and he couldn't be at more peace. Padme just loved seeing the radiant smile on Anakin's face. He was so at peace and happy with everything. The following day, he informed the council of his thoughts and his theory, that if they could locate the Sith Lord, they could use the world between worlds and remove him from a period of time without having a drastic effect on the galaxy around them. Initially, they were going to find who the Sith Lord was, go to him as a child and pull the trigger, if you will. But now they realize that at least in accordance to what Anakin was saying, it could mess everything up. But wouldn't that theoretically be better? Anakin hadn't considered the positive sides of it. If the Jedi killed Palpatine early, then Sypha Dyas, Yaddle, Dooku, and so many more would be safely protected within the light side. There would also be no Clone Wars, and there wouldn't be the fight to save the galaxy. But there would be one major factor that was unknown to everyone in these discussions. Anakin would simply cease to exist. Removing Palpatine from the picture meant that Plagueis wouldn't be able to work in tandem with Sidious to influence the midichlorians to have a reaction, which led to the creation of Skywalker. What made matters even more strenuous is that without Palpatine, the former Sith Lord, which was Plagueis, would still be on the loose. The Jedi didn't have any ties to Palpatine, but the Sith were at least semi out in the open with the Clone Wars going on. If Palpatine was gone, they wouldn't be able to find the Sith Lord until they made their own appearance. And without their knowledge, this could do a number of other things to the galaxy. Maul wouldn't necessarily die in the current timeline, as he could potentially be the apprentice or any number of mind-numbing scenarios. Anakin was adamant that they reconsider their thoughts on approaching the world between worlds. The council agreed that Anakin should be a part of the process, however, if he wanted to avoid doing what they were going to do, then he didn't have to be involved. The council wasn't trying to be cruel, but there was no point in having this discussion. How bad could it truly be? If they found the Sith Lord and traced it all the way back to when the Precursor Sith Lord found him, then they could kill two Sith with one stone. Didn't matter. Anakin was a little worried about the idea, but the council made his decision. He couldn't change their minds. Skywalker decided to butt out and focus on the war effort. The council promised they would inform him once they located a portal to the world between worlds and when they found the Sith Lord and who it was. At this point, his responsibility was to lead and search for Sidious. Qui-Gon had a theory though. He wanted to assist Anakin with his training, but if he could find and talk to Dooku, perhaps he could talk him out of the darkness. If not, then at the very least he might be able to figure out who Sidious was. Anakin was concerned with the idea, but Qui-Gon put those fears away. He told Anakin that no matter how far Dooku may have fallen, he would never hurt him. Dooku always responded to Qui-Gon when he acted out of place. Maybe it was their dynamic. Maybe it was just who Qui-Gon was, but he had to try. Before he left, he told Anakin that no matter what, whichever circumstance it might be, whether it be his back up against the wall or the fear of losing a loved one, choose the light. Anakin didn't understand, but as Qui-Gon and he walked to the ship, Qui-Gon informed him that there was no gray, there was light, and there was dark. He told Anakin to always choose light. It would save him and those he cared about from his greatest fears. Anakin didn't understand this at all, but Qui-Gon wished that the Force be with him, and he looked forward to their next meeting. Anakin and Ahsoka were sent back to the front lines. The Jedi began scouring the galaxy for Sidious, and Qui-Gon Jinn started his search for Count Dooku. Anakin continued to ponder of what his instructor told him, and he did learn that Obi-Wan, while very loving to Anakin, was a lot more standoffish than the one he was used to from the previous timeline. 
Skywalker never thought much of it, but he realized that it likely came from the events that transpired on Naboo in this new timeline. The war effort didn't change though. Anakin kept what Qui-Gon said at the forefront of his mind, and started to focus on it the more he went to battle. He realized he was going towards darkness, especially on the battlefront. The challenge for him then became resisting the pull of the dark side. If he could resist it, then perhaps he could overcome it when it presented itself. The Jedi got no leads on Sidious, and they continued searching, but their unorthodox master Jin found Count Dooku and was welcomed onto Sereno. It was a bit of a bittersweet reunion for the two Jedi. Dooku was very prideful, showing off his palace and his droids and what kind of power he possessed, and Qui-Gon walked with him, quietly. It was heart-wrenching to see how far his instructor had fallen. Dooku used to be one of the most respectable Jedi he had ever met, and now he was greedy. Qui-Gon told Dooku that this wasn't him. He wasn't acting like himself, but Dooku didn't care. He told Qui-Gon that it was too late for this conversation. The war would change everything and it would be for the better. He pleaded with Qui-Gon, telling him to join him and together they could destroy the Sith. As Qui-Gon was about to leave with a disappointed heart, he heard the Sith word, and so naturally, he asked Dooku if he knew who the Sith Lord was, and Dooku nodded his head, informing Qui-Gon that he was Sidious' apprentice. But Dooku didn't believe in their religion. He only cared about what they could give him in the galaxy. Qui-Gon remained skeptical, but he could wiggle his way into some kind of information. Dooku was seriously trying to earn another ally. Ventress was the only individual he actually cared about, and that was hard for him. Dooku tried to commit so hard, and he had done atrocious things to the people of the galaxy, but with Qui-Gon by his side, he would at least feel validated in his decision to leave the Jedi Order. The war continued on for months. Qui-Gon and Shmi's return happened within the first few months of the war, so there was a lot more to go. Qui-Gon could take advantage of Dooku for longer and get the true name of Palpatine. The painful thing for Qui-Gon is he had to sacrifice. He had to let go of what it was that he chose for himself. He spent most of his life rejecting the darker attributes that he could have learned from Dooku, and now he was forcing himself to use something that made him disgusted. Qui-Gon got physically ill every time he used the dark side, and the more Dooku pushed his former student, the more he saw what it was doing to not just himself, but his Padawan. Jedi weren't supposed to love, but Dooku loved Qui-Gon with all of his heart. To see Qui-Gon suffer and struggle made him rethink everything. And finally, one day, he snapped. Dooku confessed to Qui-Gon that it was Palpatine. He was the one behind everything. Qui-Gon immediately informed the other Jedi and then began his instructing process, one in which he could save his former teacher from the dark side, not just from his crimes, but himself. Qui-Gon knew that his master deserved to pay the price for what he had done to the people of the galaxy, but he needed his master to return from the dark side. This wasn't Dooku, and it disgusted Qui-Gon wholeheartedly. At least he'd go to prison as his true self. The Jedi received the intel from Qui-Gon and immediately sent for Anakin, which would take some time. He and his forces were engaged with the Separatist blockade, so the Council went without him. Yoda, Mundi, and Eeth Koth went to Lothal, where they'd be able to access the World Between Worlds. Despite them arriving, they didn't enter until they received confirmation from Skywalker that he did or did not want to enter it with them. Anakin initially informed them that he had no interest in being there, and as if he had a whisper through the Force, he changed his mind, leaving from his station with Ahsoka by his side and going to Lothal. He knew who the Sith Lord was, he was told, but he feared what could be the result of the Jedi killing Palpatine at a young age. Anakin's fleet wasn't far from the system, so he was able to arrive with relative ease. He and Ahsoka followed the trail down to the portal itself. While it was technically hidden under thousands of pounds of dirt and rock, the Force was a natural guide to the portal itself. Anakin found it, and because the other Jedi planned on returning, they left it open. Skywalker and Tano quickly followed it through. Anakin turned to Ahsoka and asked if she could see the other Jedi, but she couldn't. Anakin then started to run in an aimless direction, similar to how he had the first time he was here. He didn't know it, but if the other Jedi got to Palpatine before him, he would cease to exist. Not just that, but the entire galaxy would change for better or worse. Anakin, despite not knowing this, was rushing through, hoping to find a moment of Palpatine in recent history. It was a race against time. The other Jedi had been in here for at least an hour or more, simply gandering around. They were seeing the patterns and they found Palpatine once, but they were going back further. They saw Plagueis too, but it wasn't young enough. They wanted to catch them before anything could begin, before any backup plans could be put in place, before any assassins or anything. They wanted to erase the Sith entirely in one go. As they were going along, Eeth Koth had a reactionary moment 
like Anakin did, and he saved Yaddle's life from Dooku. They realized that they could change everything if they wanted. There was so much power in this portal, and yet the Jedi were blind to it for so long. None of these three, now four Jedi, had any interest in using the power aside from killing Sidious, but it was still incredible. It could be terrible in the wrong hand zone. Ahsoka was starting to fall behind as Anakin continued running through, checking every portal and looking for his chance to stop Palpatine in one strike. The other Jedi were explaining everything to Yaddle, and then they came across the portal they wanted to find. It was Plagueis with a young boy from Theed. Right here and right now, they could end both of their lives. They could extinguish the Sith. Yoda ignited his lightsaber, as did Mundi and Eeth Koth. All they had to do was make the proper strike. As Anakin and Ahsoka were running, she lost at a Skywalker, but then saw the other Jedi. She would never make it to them, so she tried yelling into the void, but it was impossible to hear her. Ahsoka turned and tried to fight Anakin again, but she was alone, lost in the world between worlds. Anakin stumbled over in front of a portal again. It was a moment from the previous day. Palpatine was preparing a Sith ritual inside of his lair, and he was alone. Anakin caught his breath and pulled his lightsaber, preparing to make the final blow. Not far from Anakin, the Elder Sith Lord, which was Plagueis, was pulled into the portal and cut down, and the little boy turned around with panic in his face, wondering where the man went. Anakin could see Palpatine's figure start to fizzle out of control, and so he pulled Palpatine into the world and slashed the lightsaber down. As he did, he saw Palpatine vanish into nothingness. He did it. Balance was restored to the Force. Anakin took a deep breath and started back to where he came from. He eventually ran into Ahsoka, who was very happy to see him, but noticed that something was off. She asked if he was feeling alright and he smiled, telling her that he had never been better. They saved the galaxy. As they neared the exit to the portal, they saw the other Jedi. It was a little relieving. They brought balance to the Force, and they finally could restore peace to the galaxy. But as they started for the portal, Anakin realized that he couldn't continue going. As he started forward towards the actual exit, he was prohibited. The Jedi all turned around and asked what happened, and then within an instant, he realized it all. He had been right. If they killed the younger iteration of Palpatine, the galaxy would be changed drastically. Anakin was now more than the Chosen One. He was a being, an entity of the Force if you will. One that could travel between worlds at will, and be by the side of those he loved and cared about most with a simple thought. But he'd be lying if he wasn't scared. He didn't know how he could handle this, and he was almost an emotional wreck, but he could feel everything. He could know everything that ever happened within an instant. He had all the knowledge of the galaxy. How could he become a ghost at such a young age, though? And then he thought back to Qui-Gon before him. Perhaps he traded one guy to become the new one. Maybe. He had much more to understand, but his journey with the Jedi was over. His journey as Ahsoka's full-time instructor had come to a conclusion. It did hurt his heart, because he could never be with Padme again, per se. But he could always be with her. The rash action of the Jedi did this, and he was upset. But it saved the galaxy from the Sith. So instead of being spiteful, he took what Qui-Gon last said to him, and chose light over dark. He told the Jedi to go out and sow peace into the galaxy, to be the bringers of light that they were always meant to be, to chase freedom rather than neglect it. They looked to him, and Ahsoka was the one who didn't want to leave. She sadly had to be pulled away, but Anakin told her that no matter what, he would always be around to leave a guiding hand. And then, they vanished from his sight. His heart fell into his stomach, but there was something more. The priestesses of the Force spoke to him, and surrounded him. Serenity, joy, anger, confusion, and sadness informed him to not lament the world he left behind, but rejoice in what he left for it. Anakin didn't understand, but he was shown. The Clone Wars never happened. Dooku and Qui-Gon were a part of a larger movement within the Jedi Order, one that reshaped everything into a modern one. Yoda, Ahsoka, Mundi, and Koth would be the only ones to know what they left behind, including Yaddle too, but she had to have more things explained to her. When they returned, the Republic was still struggling, but the Jedi were a neutral religion, one that assisted more than just the people of the galaxy. They kept the corporations from rallying around a dreary government, but the change was very large. The entire galaxy was relatively different because of Palpatine's disappearance. The people were better for it, and it left Anakin with more questions than answers. But the priestesses informed him that everything he did helped them. He did it. He brought balance to the Force. His actions in bringing back Qui-Gon set everything in the motion. Now, he could be free. He no longer had physical pain. He no longer had to fear death. He could simply exist 
and become a beacon of the forest, just like the ones. Anakin had many questions, and he would follow the priestesses to learn all the answers. Despite how confused and even sad he was initially, he found peace with it really quick. He saw his sacrifice as the one that would inevitably come, as you can see from the previous timeline. The one where he became Darth Vader, and nearly killed his son and daughter in his lusting for power. While Luke and Leia may have never been born in this new timeline, he still had his legacy being passed on. Ahsoka, Yoda, Koth, and Mundi remembered Anakin, and they never let his sacrifice be forgotten. Ahsoka would tell Yaddle of Anakin's stories, and as Yoda passed on leaving Yaddle to rise to the rank of Grand Master, with Ahsoka eventually filling in the rank of Master of the Order, they ensured the galaxy that Anakin sacrificed himself for never went to waste. Ahsoka's training would be completed by Qui-Gon, and she'd pass on everything she learned from both Qui-Gon and Anakin, and always feeling his presence and knowing that her master was watching over, always prepared to be an inspiration for the next generation of Force users in the new galaxy. And that, my friends, is our grand tier request. Again, special thanks to all of our patrons, Benjamin Wells, Jenko Fett Clone, Ben Ingram, The Big Red Pure Mark, Diamond Constant, Darth Nemesis, Lord Tip, CC2024, Galvin Gaming, Tristan Mandalore, Sir William1767, Darth Revan, Grandity Bane, Laliant, Sky Guy, Penguin, Cullen Rooney, Shark Midori, RJ38, Nick, Michael Erlanger, The Last Jedi, Apollo, We Was 670, Annika Stank Runner, CT7567, Toaster Oven, Oz of Oz, Darth Nock, The Eternal Padawan, Joshua Tem, Johnny Daguin, Seth Skeleton, Jedi Sloth, Mr. Yeet Gamer, Lord Tally, Gunless 66 Mammoth Studios, Anakin 003, Lord Dragon, Forest League, League Star Wars, Airbus, Rex Wolf, Manthe, First Names, Dark Saint 46, Baron Joshua, and Luke Denwing for supporting the channel. Smash that like button, support me out of the way, so check out the Patreon. Super cool things on there. New announcements coming soon. Otherwise, let's talk about this story. The idea of having Anakin almost trade places with Qui Gon and become what he is in canon without having to become Darth Vader kind of felt natural in a weird way. I wanted the Jedi to still act as the Jedi do in canon, which is acting haste, acting almost recklessly, and that actually having an effect on Anakin in a positive but negative way. And so he's not able to return because they act in such a way, because simply Anakin could have killed Palpatine and everything would have been fine from that timeline, but because the Jedi acted their way, they changed everything. So in a way, it's to question or see how the Jedi do the right thing, but do it in the wrong way, kind of. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed it. I love you all, spread the love, and always remember my friends, may the force be with you.